It's a really tasty game. This one at the weekend, West Brom against Ipswich. West Brom only lost one at home against the only team now left in this division that haven't lost away. Welcome to the Ipswich View. Good evening, Ian. Glad to have you back with us. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, Mark. Nice to be here. Good, good, good. Um, let's. Um, we're going to look ahead to the... Uh, to the Baggies game we're also going to talk about um, plans for Portman Road expansion which um, I was reading a reading yeah. about this week I also want to talk about Leaf Davis for England as well and get your get your views on that but let's um, let's turn the clock back shall we um, away from this horrendous international break which which no one likes and talk about talk about the last game um, what were your what were your views on it? Uh, it kind of it was like deja vu when Swansea took the lead. It's like, can we not go into a game without conceding at home? I mean, yeah, I mean, Swansea got a, an early goal. The, the only kind of plus side I can see it is we get to show our resilience again and yeah, to come back from that 1-0 down and just pick yourselves up and then just put three past them. Yeah, that, that was nice to see, but I could have done without the kind of early goal. You know, I'd like to just go into a game at home one weekend where we can go in at half time two nil up or something, you know. So but yeah, it was it was a good it was a good um performance across the park, which was good. There was no real particularly poor performances. Yeah, obviously the, the goal going in was unlucky. Yeah, and you're still there and, you know, caught up to Leicester. Obviously, you must have been pleased coming out of the yeah. ground, I'm sure, to hear that Middlesbrough had, had scored and uh, and taken uh, taken the three points there, I'm guessing. I, I was, but it was bittersweet because it made me think, do you know what, if we'd have got a result at Rotherham or we'd got a result at Birmingham, <laughs> we'd be at top of the table. So, yeah, it was great to think that, I mean, I don't think Middlesbrough beating Leicester was so much of a surprise to some people out there, um, you speak to some Leicester fans, they'll be the first to say that they haven't been that convincing in games. But um, yeah, maybe it took a little bit of pressure off us where we've a lot of lot of talk of Leeds are chasing Ipswich. Well, hang on, Ipswich and Leicester are on par now. So maybe it'll level the field a little bit and Leicester aren't the runaway horses that everyone thought they were. Just, I mean, we've talked a lot about how great you are attacking wise, the league's top scorers with, with, with 34. Let's just talk about defensive though, because one of the things I was looking at this week is that you have faced more shots um, than than any other team in the in the top six, uh, I think it is. Um, how, how far do you agree that your goalkeeper has been largely responsible for the reason for the position which you are in because you 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 know you haven't shook teams out it's just you haven't you haven't conceded many um yeah without doubt he has made some fantastic saves i think his ratings have been as high as they are because normally when a team is pushing at the top of the table maybe they don't come under as much pressure at the back Ipswich has certainly invited plenty of pressure so he's had the opportunity in a team that's at the top of the table still had the opportunity as a goalkeeper to get plenty of action in his in his goal mouth so um, yeah maybe it, it could be that teams just can't work their way into a box if they're, they're pushed to shoot early I don't know but yeah Vaslav has been for, for a guy who had to step in with not much warning, he's, he's been really steadfast. And I know he's made it into the first half of season's team of the season, if there is such a thing, but I saw a, a web page with that on. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah he's, next, he's there by merit. Yeah, I mean, the next best goalkeeper is, is, the, is the Rotherham is a Rotherham keeper, and but he's, yeah. he's he's miles ahead in terms of save percentages. Yeah. Sh uh, you know, uh, sh shot save is yeah. it's just incredible. It's certainly yeah. on the road. You know, on the road where we we had a number of clean sheets and only a couple of goals against us on the road. That's where he's certainly been. Kind of his value has come up. Okay. All right. We'll talk about the West Brom game in a second. Just just a word on on the uh, what Mark Ashton had to say this week about about Portman Road because there are plans he was he's been announcing to grow. Portman Road to create this world class uh, training centre at uh, Playford Road and also to, to expand um, expand the home ground. What are your views on that? I mean, uh, I, I'd imagine that you know this all sits in with the vision for it, which being back in the Premier League. But does it merit? Well, money? they they missed out on academy. They missed out on academy level one status by something like a half a point, and it came down to not the infrastructure, but it came down to they hadn't invested in some of the sports science areas. You know, some of the match analysis data they were using wasn't at the top market, so they got docked a half a point, and that was the difference between the a category one and category two academy. I know that Mark Ashton and the club are being buying up little areas where they are. I mean, our training ground for anyone who doesn't know, it's split by a main road. So you have 
under 18s playing on one side of the road and then the best facilities that's not ideal so they're trying to move everybody to one side of the road they've rebuilt the pitches there so and the, the pitch quality on the training pitches are uh, as good as any full pitch and in, in, in across the country i mean they're not obviously up to the standard of saying like manchester city or something but the, the facilities for playing on a great what they don't have up there is a particularly good clubhouse infrastructure so that that's a that, that's got to be upgraded but what is nice to see is he's willing to look at increasing the capacity because as we all know if, if you do make it into the premier league you, you need to be pushing 35 36 thousand as a minimum to kind of get the income that allows you to operate within the fair the financial fair play rules because you know anything below that you, you're not going to generate enough income i don't think and and the club stadium isn't owned by us it's owned by the council so you would think some owners would be reluctant to invest in it but no they've They've certainly over the season, new pitch, redecorated, building more executive boxes, and then this potential plan to extend our East Stand out and up over. So that'll be a, an extra five to seven thousand, maybe, which will take it into the 35, 36,000 capacity that we need. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at the the Carabao Cup fixture you had against Fulham, uh, Fulham 20, 28,000 came for, for yeah, that's, I mean, that's incredible. Um, it is, yeah. Um, we, we've got the demand for tickets, so yeah, we, we can certainly. While we're doing well, we've got the demand for tickets. I should add, yeah. Uh, speaking of tickets, have you got yours for Norwich already? Yes, I've got. I've actually got four. I had four seats, and then the seat next to me is spare, so I've actually gone and bought another membership. So when it comes up to option to buy, I'll, I'll buy that one as well. So, yeah, <laughs> they, they, um, they should be out available. I mean, the, the Norwich away fans they could start buying theirs from today. So. Ours are available, I think, for home fans to buy the extra tickets from, I think, probably starting Wednesday or something. So, You've yeah, got some really, um, really uh, tasty fixtures coming up, haven't you? You've got uh, Middles- uh, Middlesbrough, Norwich, and, of course, Leicester is, is coming up as well. So it's a really be an um, important month for Ipswich. Um, leave Davis um, for England, just before I get your thoughts on the Baggies game. Um, Leif Davis is a, such a consistent, great player. His assists this season the last season have been phenomenal I have to say though unless he is at a Premier League club I don't see him get a call up to England you know it's the marquee position on any football team left back there's always been a shortage of good left backs it's difficult for him to push the credibility as a newly promoted championship team to get into that England squad you know we all see young players in the Premier League getting the opportunity doesn't happen a great deal at championship level so i mean we'll see gareth southgate likes young players you know maybe if we perform well over this christmas break and we get the results against some of those big teams maybe his uh, eyes will kind of cast a bit wider than the premier league i i don't personally think there's a better left back in the championship at the moment than than uh, uh than davis um yeah and uh I think Southgate's got a problem at left back at the moment, but anyway, I'm not here to talk about England because otherwise we'd fall asleep. Um, what about the baggies? <laughs> the baggies then this uh, this weekend they are uh, they be a tough nut to crack. They've only lost one at home and they're on a decent run before they went to Southampton. What's uh, what's your thoughts on this yeah. one? Yeah, I, I see this as a litmus a litmus test. Um, we've got some hard fixtures over Christmas. If we want to be contenders, we've got to be able to dispatch some of these teams. If you compare these with some of the other games you've got, you might see this as a weakest. But yeah, they're on a they've had a good run of games. Unfortunately, they lost at Southampton. I think they've got a couple of injuries. They haven't really ever replaced O'Shea at the back. So we'll see how they come out of the injuries from international breaks. I know one of their players picked up an injury for Ghana, uh, sorry, the DRC. Um, and we're coming out of the international break fully fit. I think we've got Wes Burns back as well. So I'd like to see him start. Uh, against West Brom and uh, yeah I think it'll be a big good game and it's one of the many fixtures that we've been picked for TV as well I think we've got like six <laughs> out of eight fixtures on TV now so yeah, yeah we'll be tucking into our tea with our feet up on Saturday evening watching this one as you uh, as you understand so watch the uh, score prediction then Ian before we let you go um I'm going to see us get a cheeky two-one. Uh, I'd like to think we get a clean shot on the road, but I think West Brom have, have got they've got the, they've got the momentum now. They've got the the, the the tails are up, but I think we can squeeze another win on the road. I look forward to watching it switch on to It's one of the teams I haven't seen yet, actually, uh, actually live. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it myself. Enjoy the game. Okay. I will catch you next week. I will see. Nice one. Okay, cheers, everyone.